Here is the first lesson for the trig geometry unit. In this lesson, you will learn about the special angles of 30 degrees, 45, and 60 degrees. Before I teach you about that, let me do a quick review of the trigonometry you should already be familiar with. In grade 10 trigonometry, you should have learned that if you have a right angle triangle with a reference angle of theta, all other right angle triangles with that same reference angle of theta would be the exact same shape, meaning that they would be similar triangles. And because they're the exact same shape, we know that similar triangles have a property that tells us their ratios of corresponding sides are equivalent. Now, in any triangle, there are three sides. So there are three different pairs you can make from those sides. That's why there are three primary trig ratios. There's sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent are functions that take angles as an input. So whatever your reference angle is, that's the input. And then it outputs to you a different ratio of sides. Now, if the reference angle theta is here, the opposite side is across the triangle from it. The adjacent side is the one right beside the reference angle. And the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. It's the longest side. So sine of the reference angle means we're finding the ratio of the side opposite from the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of the reference angle equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tan of the reference angle equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And you're probably familiar with the acronym that helps you remember this. The acronym is SOHCAHTOA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent. Let me give you a quick demonstration of why this works. So here I have a right angle triangle with a reference angle of 30 degrees. Notice the sine, cos, and tan ratios of that 30 degree reference angle are being shown right here. Pay attention to specifically the sine ratio. The sine ratio of 30 degrees is 0.5. If I make this triangle bigger or smaller without changing its reference angle, even though the side lengths are going to change, the ratio of those side lengths will stay equal. So as I'm changing the size, notice side lengths are changing, but that ratio is still a half. And that's true for the cos and tan ratios as well. Those ratios are staying equal because all of the triangles I'm showing you here are similar triangles, so have equivalent ratios of sides. But if I change the reference angle, the triangles are no longer similar to each other, so the ratios are changing. All right, now let's go ahead and do a couple of examples where we need to use SOHCAHTOA to help us find a missing side or angle in a triangle. Example 1a, our reference angle is right here, 30 degrees. It's often helpful to label your opposite adjacent hypotenuse before you start the question. The hypotenuse, I'll label H, is always across from the 90 degree angle. The opposite side is going to be across from the reference angle. I'll label that O. And the adjacent side is the side that's touching the reference angle. Now you have to decide what part of SOHCAHTOA is going to help find the missing side. We're trying to find the hypotenuse. We're trying to solve for x. And the side that we know is opposite. So we'll use the ratio that involves opposite and hypotenuse. The ratio that involves those two is sine. So I could say that sine of the reference angle 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 1, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. And now to isolate x, it'll just switch spots with the sine 30. I have one divided by sine of 30 degrees. If I evaluate that, I'll get two. How about part B? In this part, we're trying to solve for a missing angle. Let's label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse from that reference angle. The hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. The opposite side is the one across from the reference angle. And the adjacent side is the one touching the reference angle. Now let's decide what part of SOHCAHTOA is gonna help us find that missing angle. Because we know the adjacent and the hypotenuse, We'll use cosine to help you find the missing angle. I know that cosine of whatever the reference angle is would equal the adjacent side, root 2, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2. And then when you know the ratio but want the angle, you use the inverse cosine ratio, sometimes called arc cosine, of the ratio, and you'll be able to solve for the angle. And you would get 45 degrees. All right, now that you know how we use SOHCAHTOA to find missing sides or angles, let's go ahead and look at two special angles. So there are two special triangles you should be able to create. The first special triangle is an isosceles 45-45-90 triangle. If it's a right angle triangle that is isosceles, that would mean that these two angles are both 45. And because those two angles are the same, I know that those two sides would have to be the same. We can make up whatever side length we want for them, but the easiest thing to work with would be making them both length 1. And if they're both length 1, I could solve for the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem tells me that the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides equals the square of the longer side. So 1 squared plus 1 squared 
would equal c squared. So 2 equals c squared. Move the square over by square rooting. I figure out c is root 2. So the longest side is root 2. Now that we have all three sides of this triangle labeled, we could get the exact values of sine, cos, and tan of 45 degrees without needing a calculator. Let's pick this 45 degree angle as the reference angle. That would make this side over here opposite, this side adjacent, and this side, which is across from the 90 degree angle, is of course the hypotenuse. Now that we have all the side lengths labeled, we can use our understanding of SOHCAHTOA to get the exact value of all three of those ratios without a calculator. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is one over root two. Cosine of 45 would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which is also one divided by root two. And tan of 45 would equal opposite over adjacent, which is one over one, which is just one. Let's look at the other special triangle now. It is a half equilateral triangle that has angles of 30, 60, and 90. Let's look at this triangle. Notice it used to be an equilateral triangle. If it was an equilateral triangle, all three angles inside that equilateral triangle would all be 60 degrees. And also, all three side lengths would have to be the same length. We could assign them whatever length we want. It'll be easiest if I say that they are all two. But remember, this equilateral triangle has been cut in half. That's why this angle is now 30 degrees. And this side length would be half of the two that it used to be. So that would make that side length one. Let me just erase this here. And now we can just focus in on this half of the equilateral triangle where I know all the angles and currently I know two of the sides. We could find the third side using Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem would tell me that a squared plus one squared would equal two squared. That would mean a squared equals three, which means a is root three. So the length of this side here, the height of that triangle is root three. Now that I have all of the dimensions of that triangle, I could find the exact values of sine, cos, and tan of both the 30 degree and 60 degree angle. Let's start with the 30 degree angle. That would make one the opposite, root three the adjacent, and two the hypotenuse. Using SOHCAHTOA, I can write the sine, cos, and tan ratios for 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees would equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Cosine of 30 degrees would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root three over two and tan of 30 degrees would equal opposite over adjacent, which is one over root three. Let's do the same thing, but let's make 60 the reference angle. That would make root three the opposite side and one the adjacent side. Doing sine of 60 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse, root three over two. Cosine of 60 degrees would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a half. And tan of 60 degrees would be opposite over adjacent, which is root three divided by one, which is just root three. So if you look at these two special triangles, we're able to get the exact values of all three primary trig ratios for 30, 60, and 45 degrees without a calculator. Let's see how we can use that information. All sized right triangles with these angles are similar, right? They would have the exact same shape. They wouldn't necessarily have the exact same lengths of sides, but their ratios of sides would be equal. Therefore, we can use these two special triangles to get exact values for trig ratios that involve 30, 45, or 60 degree reference angles, and we won't need a calculator. For example, it says in example two, use special triangles to find the exact values of all missing sides and angles. Well, we're missing two sides here. I'll call them X and Y, and we're missing an angle. Well, I know the angles in a triangle have to add to 180, so if this is 90 and 45, it'd be easy to find the other one is 45 as well. Now we could solve for the missing sides without using special triangles or SOHCAHTOA, Right? This is clearly an isosceles triangle, so those two sides are the same, and then we could use Pythagorean theorem for that. But I want to make you comfortable with how we can use exact trig ratios to solve for things, so we'll do it a different way. Let's make the 45 degree angle the reference angle. That would make x the opposite side, 4 the adjacent side, and y the hypotenuse. Based on SOHCAHTOA, I know that tan of 45 degrees would be opposite over adjacent. That would mean that tan of 45 would equal x over 4. And tan of 45, if we look back to your special triangles, we know tan of 45 is always going to be 1. So I can replace, in this equation, I can replace tan of 45 with the ratio I know it's always equal to. It's always equal to 1. And then isolate x by multiplying the 4 over, and I figure out the x must be 4. And then we can follow a similar process for cosine. 
cosine of 45 would equal adjacent over hypotenuse. That would mean that cosine of 45 degrees, based on this triangle, would equal 4 over y. Cosine of 45, if you remember your special triangle, cosine of 45 is always equal to 1 over root 2. So in this question, I can replace cosine 45 with 1 over root 2. To isolate y, I can do some cross multiplication and get y equals 4 root 2. Let's try this again for another triangle. If I know this angle of the right triangle is 60, well, then I know this would be 30. I don't know this side, I'll call it y. I don't know this side, I'll call it x. If we make the 60 degree angle the reference angle, that would mean that 3 root 3 is opposite, y is adjacent, and x is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. And then using Sokotoa, we can solve for the missing sides. If we start with sine of 60 degrees, I know that would be opposite over hypotenuse, which means that sine of 60 would equal 3 root 3 over x. And sine of 60 degrees is always the same value, and we can get it without a calculator by referencing the special triangle that we made earlier. Sine of 60 is always root 3 over 2. So I can replace sine of 60 with root 3 over 2. I'll now solve for x by cross multiplying. I get x root 3 equals 2 times 3 root 3, which is 6 root 3. Divide both sides by root 3 to isolate x, and I get x equals 6. We can follow a similar process to find y. If I want y, that's adjacent, and the side I know is opposite, so I'll use tan to solve for it. So that would mean that tan of 60 degrees equals the opposite side, which is 3 root 3, divided by the adjacent side, which is y. And tan of 60, we can get that ratio without a calculator using the special triangle. I know that tan of 60 is always equal to root 3. So I'll replace tan 60 with root 3. I'll isolate this y by multiplying it over. It'll switch spots with the root 3. I get y equals 3 root 3 over root 3. The root 3s cancel, and I figure out that y is equal to 3. Let's do another example where we can find the exact value of some products and sums of trig ratios, and we can do it without a calculator because we can use the special triangles. For part A, I'm going to start by finding the exact value of all four of these trig ratios using my special triangles. If you use a calculator, it'll probably give you an approximate value. We can get the exact values by using the triangles. So sine of 45, we would go to a 45 degree reference angle and do opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. Cos of 45, go to a 45 degree reference angle and do adjacent over hypotenuse, which is also 1 over root 2. Plus, I now need sine of 30, so go to a 30 degree reference angle and do opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Multiply that by sine of 60, go to a 60, and do opposite over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. And now it's just basic evaluation. The product of the first two fractions, multiply the tops and bottoms, we get 1 over root 4, and root 4 is just 2, so we get a half, plus root 3 over 4. I can get a common denominator by multiplying top and bottom of the first fraction by 2, which gives me 2 plus root 3 over 4. That's the exact value, and there is no calculator needed. Part B, in the numerator, I have sine squared of 30 degrees. Let me make a note for you about what that means. Sine squared of 30 degrees just means sine of 30 degrees times another sine of 30 degrees. And what is sine of 30 degrees? Well, if sine from 30, we would do opposite over hypotenuse. It's a half. So I've got a half times a half, which I'll write as a half squared over 1 minus cos of 30 degrees. Cosine from 30 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. I'm going to want to collect those together, so I'm going to rewrite that 1 with a denominator of 2, making it 2 over 2. In the numerator, I've got a half squared. That means a half times a half, which is a quarter, and that's being divided by 2 minus root 3, both over 2. Now in dividing fractions, I can keep the top fraction the same, change to multiplication, and do the reciprocal of the fraction that's in the denominator. Let me make myself some room for this. So this would equal a quarter multiplied by the reciprocal of 2 minus root 3 over 2, which is 2 over 2 minus root 3. This 2 over 4 reduces to a half, and I get 1 over 2 times 2 minus root 3, which I could write as 4 minus 2 root 3. And there's the exact value without a calculator. Now this answer actually should be simplified further by rationalizing the denominator. You're not supposed to leave a final answer with a square root in the denominator. So let me show you how we can do that. 
Part 3 is about rationalizing denominators. So if we have an expression that looks like this, 1 over root 2, which we have had a bunch of times when we've done cos or sine of 45 degrees, we actually should rationalize that denominator. If I zoom in on it, we can do that by multiplying top and bottom of this expression by root 2. Notice we're just multiplying it by 1, so we're not changing its value. But in the numerator, I have 1 times root 2, which is root 2. And in the denominator, I have root 2 times root 2, which is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2, so I have root 2 divided by 2. Both of these expressions, 1 over root 2 and root 2 over 2, have the exact same value. They're both about 0.71. They're just two different ways of expressing the same answer. And this one at the bottom has the square root out of the denominator, so we say it's been rationalized, and that's the answer we would want to leave as a final answer for a question. There's another trick you'll need to know. What if in the denominator there's a square root that's being added or subtracted from a constant? The trick is called multiplying by the conjugate. We actually want to multiply this top and bottom by the same thing, right? We can't change its value. The thing we multiply it by is the conjugate of 1 plus root 5. That means we leave these two terms the same, but we change the sign between them to minus. So we multiply top and bottom by 1 minus root 5. And the reason why we do that is because it creates a difference of squares. Let me remind you about what that difference of squares rule is. If you have an a plus b times an a minus b, the difference of squares rule tells you that that would simplify if you expanded it to just a squared minus b squared. So in the denominator, I've got 1 plus root 5 times 1 minus root 5. You can think of the 1 as the a, the root 5 as the b, so it would simplify to 1 squared minus root 5 squared. So in the denominator, it's going to go to 1 squared minus the square root of 5 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, and the square root of 5 squared, those are inverse operations, so it's just 5. So in the denominator, I've got 1 minus 5, which is just negative 4. Now let's talk about the numerator. In the numerator, I've got 3 times 1 minus root 5. We could expand the 3 to both the 1 and the root 5, making it 3 minus 3 root 5. And lastly, this negative sign that's in the denominator, we should move it to in front of the fraction or distribute it to both terms in the numerator. I'll just put it in front of the fraction, making it negative 3 minus 3 root 5 over 4. And if you wanted to distribute that negative to both terms in the numerator, this would be equal to negative 3 plus 3 root 5 all over 4. So this, I think, would be the most acceptable final answer for an expression that started off looking like this. There's no square root left in the denominator, and there's no negative left in the denominator. There you go. Now you know how to use the special triangles to get exact values for ratios that involve angles of 30, 45, and 60, and you also know how to rationalize expressions by getting square roots out of the denominator.